72 hours, goddamn, I'm feeling late. Damn, I'm in the face of my mind. Let's look at that cloud now, and this night is never on vacation. Start off that mind, I'm riding in. Yo, what is up, guys? Horcrux here. Long time no upload, I know, I know. So, today I'm going to be bringing you what I've been running uh, here on the Stone Thorn patch. Now, keep in mind that Zoss is currently doing these AoE tests for the next month. So, this build is subject to change over time. Um, when it does change, because I know it will, because right now they're doing a global cooldown on all AoEs. Well, let me tell you guys what their definition of AoE is. Rapid regen counts as AoE. Cauterize counts as AoE. Flames of Oblivion counts as AoE. Your volatile armor counts as an AoE. So all these abilities that you use pretty often uh, send you on a global cooldown, which pretty much just breaks the class. So keep an eye out for those videos. I will update the channel. Um, when this build does change, I'll make a post or something, but uh, without further ado, we'll get right into it. I'll show you what I'm running for now. So here's the stat sheet, everything completely unbuffed. Buff everything up. Back bar, running 30k resistances. Front bar will go up to 3k spell damage. I just didn't swap in time, but that's okay. So, there's 3k spell damage. I got 2600 crit resist. Magic recovery and stamina recovery, don't even fucking worry about the magic recovery. As you guys know from my previous builds, I abused the fuck out of the combustion passive. Now I'll show you guys how I'm running at this patch. And then the stamina recovery really doesn't matter as well because this is a heavy armor build. Running a 115 setup to maximize our Indonid. Uh, next running uh, the Mage Mundus. I just like having Mage Mundus for more resources. Uh, if you're struggling with sustain, which you should not, if played correctly, you can run the Astronauts. It did receive a buff this patch. Or you can run the Apprentice for slightly more damage. I just prefer the Mage because eh, you're not going to lie, it makes the statue look nice and it does give you more resources to play around with. Running the Bewitched Sugar Skulls. Uh, this is the cheapest, probably the most beneficial food that you can run. Gives you health recovery, gives you tri stats, which the DK dips into every stat pretty much evenly. Uh, I am a Breton. I don't see how Breton's just not best in slots. Uh, not Breton, excuse me, Dark Elf. Uh, Dark Elf's one of my favorites. Uh, it's got the best passives. It gives you stamina. It makes you immune to burning effect and amplifies all your flame damage effects. Um, you can probably go High Elf or Breton or even Nord if you really wanted to, but uh, as far as best in slots concerned, I definitely rock the Dunmer. Alright, so... You guys are going to call me a meta slave. You're going to hate it, but you've seen this combo time and time again. And I've tried light armor builds, fellas. I've tried so many different setups. And the results just speak for themselves. It's a tried and true setup. So call me a meta slave if you want, but this is by far one of the best setups still on DK. And in fact, it actually got a bit of a buff. And I'll show you. So first step, we're running Elf Bane. This is only on the front bar. We're running charge because we are abusing the fuck out of the combustion passive. Pretty much every other time you apply flame damage, you're always getting a tick of magic back. If you guys aren't familiar with the magic, the uh, combustion passive does on the DK. If you're new to the class, essentially every time you apply burning effect, you get magic back. And there's no cap on this. There's no cooldown. And with charge, you pretty much almost every other tick of flame damage from your dots, you apply burning. So you get a hell of amount of resources back, as long as you can keep people dotted up. Right, the Befouled uh, Weapon Enchantment. Uh, this puts a Defile on your enemies. Uh, you have champion points to bolster this. Pretty much every time this procs, you're inflicting people with Defile, reducing their healing by a shitload. So uh, this is pretty much all DKs are running. There's a few variants, you know, light armor steps or whatever, but this is pretty much best in slot from what I've gathered. What I've been running, I've probably spent like a million gold testing all kinds of different sets. Did your trickery, what is mean? There's all kinds of shit. Uh, I will actually be coming out with a second build video, uh, probably a week or so from now, using did your trickery. Uh, but uh, we'll get into that in a different time. So next set we're going to run is Brothgar. Yeah, I know, I don't have him golded it out. So if you guys aren't familiar with the set, Anytime you apply flame damage, or j just deal damage in general, whatever. If there's an enemy within 8 meters of you, this is going to proc. Uh, you get the swirling ring of death around you for uh, 10 seconds on a 10 second cooldown as long as you're using Elf Bane. If you're not using Elf Bane, this is going to be a 5 second cooldown, so you'll have 50% uptime. 
Uh, just pay attention when this proc. Uh, you can see right here. This is my Grothgar proc. So essentially, I pay attention when it procs. And since I don't have this on my front bar, you want to make damn sure when this duration is over, you end up back on your front bar. No matter what you do, just end up on your front bar again. Otherwise, it can accidentally proc on your back bar, just like it did, only giving you a five second duration instead of 10. So uh, that's just a skill cap thing to kind of uh, keep in the back of your head when running this build. So Elfbane, you guys probably know this. You can Google it, look it up. Running Infused on this, uh, because uh, uh, Infused did get a little bit of a buff. Plus, uh, it's good to have the extra stats. Uh, Impenetrable is much less relevant this patch, so it's good to kind of mix and match your set pieces as much as possible. I do have a couple of Impen pieces, but uh, not so much. Uh, Elfbane, uh, on the Greaves in the chest, I would uh, suggest running Reinforce, because it gives you about 500 uh, spell and physical resist. Uh, just currently, I haven't been able to find a piece that's cheap, and I don't want to use stones to revert this, and so I'm rocking an pin for now. Uh, sturdy on the shoulders. Uh, you can't go wrong with sturdy. Uh, sturdy, well fitted is even good. And pin's good. I mean, it's all good, fellas, to be honest. So, last but certainly not least, that we're running, this is going to be on our back bar, it is Bloodthorn. Uh, this set came out a very long time ago. It's very underutilized. I feel that uh, this is one of the, the sleeper sets. It just kind of escapes everyone's mind for whatever reason. So, essentially, whenever you deal direct damage, you have about 900 magic and stamina back. This can occur every 5 seconds. So, what, what's the definition of direct damage? Well, Rothgar is direct damage. Any light attack is direct damage. If you're using wings and your back bar, it has direct damage. Preacher Entropy, the first stick, counts as direct damage. Volatile Armor, if people's hitting you, that counts as direct damage. So, when you're on your back bar, this can be procced very, very easily, especially since we're running a Frost Staff for light attack. Sometimes when you're running Sword and Board, uh, enemy's not in range to get your light attacks off. It's kind of troublesome. So I'm running a Frost Staff, just to make sure I have 100% uptime on this set. The rest of the traits, like I said, uh, if it's a heavy piece, you never go wrong with reinforced, sturdy, and pan well fitted. It doesn't really matter whether it fits your playstyle. Now, when it comes to the jewelry, I'm running a two reduced cost. Uh, the reason I'm able to run two reduced cost and I haven't run three like a lot of builds do is because of Bloodthorn. It is a sustained set, you know, in general. So uh, you could possibly get away with running two spell damages, only one reduced cost, but uh, I like to over sustain, so that's why I still keep two. Uh, all your spells actually cost less than running light armor with two reduced costs. So. And then the last one I have spell damage, and of course, the last that we have on is Malachi's Banner Brutality. If you guys are familiar with what this does, I don't know what rock you've been living under, but it negates all your crit damage, but you do 25% more damage overall. This applies to your proc sets. Now, one other thing to know about Rothgar, even though the flames do do a lot of damage, <laughs> do do. Uh, that's kind of 50% what the set does. This is to make sure we keep burning up on as many people as possible. So when you have this AoE around you and you're just on your back bar backpedaling trying to cast spells or whatever, Grothgar makes sure it keeps your resources up. So that's also another benefit of it, not just, just the damage portion, but also the sustain portion as well. So that about does it for the armor setup. Now, another video, I will be going over Daedric Trickery. This is a build I've been running on the DK. So it gives you three of every stat. Then the five piece, it gives you a random buff. I don't know if you guys have looked at this, but uh, all the buffs are exactly what the DK needs. It does not matter what major buff you get, you're going to benefit from this. You get uh, Mending, Vitality, that's essentially 25 and 30% healing increase. You get Protection, that's a 30% mitigation. You get Expedition, which a DK lacks mobility, it's really good. And if the stars align, you get fucking heroism. If you get major heroism on this build, I, I, I'm trying to keep this one low key. That's why I'm not going to make the build video anytime soon, probably a couple weeks. But the heroism, you actually get three ultima every one and a half second. So you get six ultima every two seconds or three seconds or something like that. It's very good. Now, there's pots that also give you minor heroism. So probably 16 seconds, guys. You, you already have your passive ult gen. You have your minor heroism pots, and then you'll have a major heroism buff, maybe. Um, I've got my leap in like less than 10 seconds. 
and god forbid if you run decisive <laughs> perks on your weapons but that is a build for another time just kind of throwing out a little teaser don't sleep on this set all right so skills running like i said this is going to be subject to change depending on what zoss does with the aoe testing as of right now this needs to be burning embers go right now all your aoe's share the same cooldown so for example if i use burning talons I would not be able to cast Engulfing Flames, I would not be able to cast Cauterize, I would not be able to cast Volatile Armor. Now, a nice rule of thumb is to just not have more than three AoEs on both of your bars at any given time because you just really limit yourself to, to what you can cast, okay? So, I try to keep it limited to, to three AoEs on the bar. This will change in a couple weeks. Hopefully, they'll assess giving each ability its own individual cooldown, which is what you know it needs to be done regardless because rapid regen even though it's only a single target hill guys it still counts as an aoe and this that's kind of the main reason i'm not running it <laughs> but uh anyways i forgot to say on the back bar we got weapon damage enchant anywho front bar ellie drain free to cast weakens up your enemies you get uh implies that minor magic is still is essentially 600 magic recovery on whoever you keep this up on so just have Ellie Drain and dot up on them to keep this ticking at all times fossilize probably the second best CC in the game the best CC in the game obviously is streak which is overtuned and overperforming needs nerfed into the ground that's a lot saying I'm a Sork main but I digress not only does it stun them but it roots them as well for even more crowd control burning talent now this skill I would not suggest running this Unless you're running Gulf Bane. If you're running some other set like Stuns or Acolyte or whatever, I would run Engulfing Flame. But uh, the fact that it more than doubles the duration with Elf Man, and that dot is super heavy. Like everything completely unbuffed has a 15k dot over 9 seconds. That's that's really, really hefty. It's a big ass AoE. Plus it does initial damage. Plus it's going to afflict everyone with burning. Plus it roots them. So essentially they have to roll dodge out of this. If they don't roll dodge out of this, they're just going to be fucked. Um, it's a really good uh, resource economy drain ability. Um, when people are training you, four or five people on you at a time just pop this run away. So you cause four or five people to roll dodge you, you know, roll dodge after you, and then over time that really adds up. Plus, like I said, does a lot of damage. Hits through roll dodge. You can pull people out of stealth. Uh, next is flame lash. I have played around instead of power lash using uh, molten whip, but the thing is, guys, the way the AOE tests are right now. Uh, you just can't get Molten Whip proct, the Seething Fury proct enough uh, because you use Burning Talons, oh, it goes on cooldown. You use uh, Engulfing Flames, oh, it goes on cooldown, right? Even if you spam, uh, what's it called? I always forget it, man. Not Cauterize, but uh, Flames of Oblivion. This counts as an AoE as well. So even if you want like, to use Flames of Oblivion as your spammable, you wouldn't be able to get seedling fury stacks because you gotta wait three seconds to cast it again. So as of right now, this is power lash. This is subject to change. And that leads into my next ability, Burning Embers. It's a single target, not AoE, so therefore it's not gonna go and cool down. So that's why this is here. This is a really good source of healing as well. Apply this to as, as many people as possible as you can. Because sometimes you just can't go on the offensive. And then when your stacks of burning embers fall off, you get the big ass burst seals and you can go on the offensive again. Ultimate running on the front bar, running Ferocious Leap. This is a gap closer, burst, really catches people off guard. <laughs> you can try to run Shifting Standard, guys, but if anyone knows what they're doing, they're just going to run out of it. Let's be real. Half the people in Serial don't run Moon Pots anyway. Unless you're in a group, if you're doing solo play, Shifting Standard is definitely not the way to go. Now if you just want to say fuck it and just tank Zergs, this is really fun. And like tank 10, 15 people at a time, so you get two or three kills. You can run Magma Shell. So with Elf Bane, it does extend the duration from 13 seconds to 18 seconds. So you know, essentially for you know 18 seconds, you're unkillable, and you can get some three or kills off if people just kind of underestimate your ability because people forget to buff up when they're zerging someone down, and you actually have a lot of turnaround potential with this ability. It's really fun to use. Back bar, ring cauterize. This unfortunately does count as an AoE, so it does go on cooldown. So be careful when you use this. Uh, it gives us crit on the back bar, which we can still create heal, which is very, very important, especially on our back bar because our major sources of healing are just burst heals, not even hots. So having crit on your back bar is super advantageous. 
Plus it gives you a little mini healer every five seconds. And hopefully they redo the AoE caps so where you can spam this. But uh, we'll see. Coagulating blood. This did get a little bit of a buff, thank fucking god. It's still not as good as like Breath of Life or uh, Honor of the Dead or whatever it's called. But uh, when you're below 50% health, this does really, really bolster its healing effects. It's it's phenomenal ability. I won't say a pheno phenomenal ability, but it's definitely a lot better than what it was. Um, I'm buffed. You know, it's a 9,500 heal, which is pretty high from what I've been seeing in other people's builds. I mean, everything fully buffed should... I mean, it's an 11k heal, and then, you know, you really low, it's bolstered by a shit ton. But anyway, healing's really good on this build, if you guys haven't found that out. Next, uh, a lot of TKs don't run wings. I just don't understand it. So, this mitigates all projectiles by 50%, plus it shoots an orb that does as much damage as the Flames of Oblivion proc. Instead of every 5 seconds, it does every half seconds. So the amount of time that a Flames of Oblivion can proc, you could have 10 of these shoot off instead of just one. Why people aren't using this is, is beyond me. It helps soften up opponents, especially snipe spammers from very far away trying to gank you a poison injection or whatever. They shoot two or three times with this, they're down to half health. You leap them, whip them. That's it, GG, no re. Next, Volatile Armor. Uh, this is your self buff. Uh, it actually does a decent amount of damage over time. Unfortunately, this does count as an AoE, so you can't really spam this as much as I, thought, as I would like. It lasts for 20 seconds, but I tend to find myself spamming this every 10 seconds just to apply that dot. But, like I said, with AoE caps in place, uh, it's probably not a good idea at this point. Last skill in the bar, Degeneration. This is a source of major sorcery. Yes, we definitely do need it because we have super, super high spell damage of 3k fully buffed. Plus, it does a decent dot as well, and it's cheap. Temporal, excuse me, temporal guard on back bar. This gives us minor protection, and if you have access to this pay to win skill line, it also gives you a little shield on the back bar uh, whenever you block. It's pretty beneficial. Um, it's not a lot, but it does add up you know, over time if you're constantly blocking, which you are in this build, and you can because you have Bloodthorn. Uh, all of our regen isn't coming from regen; it's coming from procs of stuff. Bloodthorn gives you procs and magic and stamina, so even though you're permanent blocking, you can still get stamina back, uh, which is really, really cool with this build. Um, very easy to run. Not much downtime. You're super tanky. Like I said, you get 30k spell resistance on your back bar. I mean, uh, I know a lot of DKs run around the heavy armor. And, like Their physical resistance is like 22k and spell resistance is like 25k. Like, you, you can't live like that. I, I don't understand how people are doing that shit. Like, they must play Daylight to Dark to get clips. I mean, <laughs> I mean I'll play a couple hours a day. I can get two or three cl clips easily. So I I don't know, fellas. Um, maybe I'm missing something here, but eh, I don't think I am. So that about does it for the skill and the loadout. Um, things to mention. Oh, poisons. Not poison. Potions. Potions are very, very important. So there's three of them I typically run. If I can find them here, tri stats are always good uh, in case you need a little bit of a burst still in a situation. But what's an absolutely necessary essence is detection. Night blades are really fucking annoying, even more so than ever because you can't spam AoEs to pull them out of stealth anymore. So you gotta have some sort of detection, otherwise they're just gonna troll you. Uh, next is the most powerful potion for DK. So it says essence of magic, but essentially these are heroism pots. Restores your magic, gives you recov, restores your stamina, gives you recov in that one, but the more importantly, it gives you minor heroism, generating one ultimate every 1.5 seconds on DK. It's very, very important because a lot of your sustain comes from your battle or passive, so getting your ult up as much as possible is very, very good. Helps with overall damage, sustain, tankiness, you know, whatever. Um, that does it for pretty much everything besides the CP and keep in mind guys another disclaimer I am not max CP it's okay I know I'm not a noob I assure you this is a PC account just because I'm 677 CP doesn't mean I don't know what I'm talking about so we'll hop into the blue tree quickly go over this you don't need any points in Elkhorn since we're not going to create anyway 73 mastered arms the rest of your points put in a thaumaturge so you can get your exploiter passive the rest of these trees really don't mean anything. Ironclad, resilient, 
Thick skin, LA drain, hardy, quick recovery, you know, whatever. These getting points left over Saucepan here. They're not going to make it break the build at all. I would suggest getting points to the Critical Leech because this eh, helps a little bit. And then Green Tree. This is just preference. One of the Siphoners, just apply the debuff that has to be cleansed. Sprinter, Warlord, pretty evenly. I wouldn't put any points in Arcanus or Mooncalf because, like I said, we're not running recovery at all. We're exploiting the Combustion Passive. Do heavy attack every now and then, so a little bit into tenacity. Shadow Ward, Tumbling, and Befoul. Befoul is a big one. Put as many points as you can in here to spare just to further bolster your Defile from your Destro Staff and the Charge trait to keep that up as much as possible. This also applies to your Standard. If you're running a small group, you apply Standard. This healing reduction is further bolstered by the CP. And it's, it's kind of overpowered, to be honest. It needs to tune down, but uh, it is what it is. Alright fellas, hopefully you enjoyed the build. Uh, I will be uploading clips, yeah, as always, after this build video, or maybe I'll upload the clips first and then go into build. I don't know. We'll we'll see how everything plays out, but it's nice to be back. Thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, leave them down in the comments section. Like, dislike, doesn't matter. Let me know what you're running. Let me know if I missed anything, if I misspoke at all. Always room for improvement. So uh, with all that being said, it's good to be back. You guys have a great day and deuces.